To this point we've introduced the finite difference method and how exactly that proceeds forth if we have a, an elliptic partial differential equation. And in particular we looked at a heated plate uh, in, in steady state. And so we had these, these different interior nodes that we looked at given, given some boundary conditions. And we know that we can deal with either, um, either the boundary conditions given the temperature at the, at the edges or um, or we can deal with the boundary conditions where uh, where we're given a derivative. Uh, you just have to use a different finite difference method and 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 substitute the um, the derivative in for one of the temperatures. And uh, so then the next question is, what do we do to deal with irregular boundaries? Well, so here I'm giving the example. So typically we would have had this uh, this all nice and laid out, and you have the nodes right on these right on these endpoints and the temperatures are given everywhere here. Well, what happens if we cut that off? What happens if we have a rounded corner here? And, and we, know the, we know the equation of the corner, so that's not a problem, but um, the thing is we're given the temperature here and here instead of, instead of all the way down here. And so what that does to us is it messes, up, messes us up a little bit. We have to think about what to do uh, in this situation. In particular, uh, we were using a centered uh, finite difference approximation for the second derivative. Well, uh, you should remember from the derivation of, of the finite difference formulas uh, based on the Taylor series expansions that we assumed an equal step size on both sides. So uh, we can't use that. Uh, we can't use the, uh, the midpoint finite um, divided difference me method. So uh, we're sort of in trouble here. Well, what, what do we do? Well, what we can do is we can actually derive a different finite difference formula that doesn't rely on um, on the step sizes being the same and when we do that we can do that in general so where here we have we typically have so if this is the x direction and this is the y direction then um, in general we're gonna have so this would be delta x but the entire thing would be delta x but we just call this alpha 1 delta x here and then this we'll call alpha 2 delta x okay so we have an alpha 1 delta x alpha 2 delta x so now we've generalized so we're still using this this delta x term but we've generalized the formula uh, well, we've generalized our, our representation. We could do the same thing in the y direction, and we call that maybe alpha. Well, instead of alpha, let's use beta. Beta one, delta y, and then here we might have uh, beta two, delta y. So you get the point. Then uh, what do we do? Well, what we can do is start with the finite divided difference methods and and so we'll just uh, we'll expand that at this point uh, x i so this point is um, i j that's the point that we're interested in and so we'll do an approximation of the derivative to i j and to i minus one j so we'll do it at those two points so the partial uh, with respect to x at so we'll say at the point i j and that's going to equal so let's just do the backward um, no let's do the forward divided difference so that at this point we're using this point and at this point we're using this point so uh, with with i j then we'll do um, t i plus one j minus t i j all over, and we have to use uh, this distance, all over alpha 2 delta x, and then we do the partial of t with respect to x at i minus 1 j, and that's going to equal, we'll use uh, this point and this point, so that's going to be t i j, so minus t i minus 1 j all over alpha 1 delta x. 
All right, so now we have an approximation of the first derivative here and an approximation of the first derivative here. Well, we can combine those two and get an approximation for the second derivative because the approximation for the second derivative is going to be the derivative of this. So it'll be the partial with respect to x of uh, dt dx. And so we'll use another finite difference. So we'll, and we want this at the point ij. And so we can say that's equal to... Um, so again, we'll we'll do the the four. Um, yeah, you know, well, I guess it I guess it'll be the the backward divided difference. So we'll say uh, dt dx at i j minus dt dx at i minus one j all over and here's where we have to we have to combine um, the two so we say uh, alpha 1 plus well it's got to have the delta x delta x plus alpha 2 delta x all over 2 and that's it. So uh, the next thing we can do is if, if we realize what our original problem was, what we were originally trying to do, that was uh, the, the equation, the second partial of t uh, with respect to x. Let's scroll down here so we get a little bit of room. Second partial of t with respect to x minus the second partial of t. Sheesh, I can't even write here second partial of t with respect to y uh, is equal to zero and that's what we were trying to solve so uh, we write this out for x we can write it out for y uh, when we simplify this down for x this is what we get the second partial of t with respect to x at the point ij is equal to 2 over delta x times the quantity of ti minus 1j minus tij over alpha 1 times alpha 1 plus alpha 2 you get the point so uh, that's what it all works out to and then when we do that for uh, for both delta x and delta y and we substitute that back into this original equation uh, the original differential equation that we we're trying to solve then uh, this is what we get and so that's the formula instead of instead of the other one that we derived that's the formula that we use uh, at this point and that gives us a, a nice accurate approximation uh, considering the the non-normal geometry now that is the right way to deal with abnormal geometry. Uh, in the real world, uh, people don't always deal with things the right way. So there are other things you can do. You could say, well, alpha 1 is about equal to alpha 2. Let me just ignore the fact that this was a little way, ways away from the boundary. And it turns out that you can get away with that. But uh, if you're going to get away with that, you're going to have to have a pretty fine mesh. And so the other way is just to just to make the mesh size a lot smaller and then just uh, you know uh, eat a sandwich or something while, while it's running and so um, you can do that too but but that is sort of a major um, difficulty with finite difference method is is it takes some book work uh, to take care of irregular boundaries and and we're usually not working in the real world with with just flat plates so that's just something then to be aware of